So we've heard the facts, we've gathered some data, now let's hear directly from the voices that need to be elevated the most, our students. They'll be moving to the stage here momentarily. Joining us to share their important perspectives about how they are preparing for their futures, here on stage are Micah Nagel, please raise your hand. Uh, Micah received special permission uh, by me to wear that lion's hat in his picture. <laughs> Uh, I think half of the room knows that there's a big game this evening, and that's just Micah's way to show support. So Micah Nagel from Caledonia, please raise your hand again, Micah. Riley O'Connor from Comstock Park. Janelle Sanchez Puentes from Godfrey Lee at Lee High School. And Kareem Suleiman from East Kentwood. All right. the question, give a little bit of an elevator speech on what you said before, because you've got mm -hmm. folks here from Caledonia, East Kentwood, who really want to uh, know your thoughts. So I know you have a plan, a plan for what's next after high school. Would you tell us about it briefly and share us what helped you determine the plan and what inspired or informed it? Yeah, so I'm planning on going into athletic training uh, after high school. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not athletic enough to do sports in college, uh, so I will be still kind of pursuing that sports area, but um, some, some of that pushed that. I have some really uh, cool coaches that kind of inspired that. Uh, and we have some classes at Caledonia, uh, some sports med and human anatomy that I was really unique opportunity to get to go through that and kind of develop that love for uh, athletic training and just the human body in general. Thank you, thank you. Kareem? Yeah, um, so what I'm thinking about doing is going to college and majoring in this kind of newer program here, I know that it was a program that Oxford originally created, but it's called Psychology, Political Science, and Economics, a PPD. And it's something that I'm very interested in. I'm an APT currently, which is American Political Thought, which we do like debates at districts, uh, states, nationals, and it's a lot about like constitutional democracy and uh, philosophy. And I really got some inspiration, especially while taking this class, taking AP Gov, that this is something that I really want to do. And after interning over the summer with uh, Representative Phil Skaggs, I, I had a really great opportunity to do that and learn more about uh, politics and the inner workings of the government. And so after I graduate, I would love to you know, put my boots on the ground and start working in, in politics. Thank you. Riley, I, I know you've had some areas of interest, but you said you don't have a plan at this time. And uh, I would say that half of this room probably didn't have a plan at one time or another. And some of us were probably 30 or 40 or 50 until we had a plan. What might you need before developing that plan or feeling good about your plan? I feel like I need a lot, like, a lot more information about what I want to do because I know what I want to do, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. And I don't know what kind of tools I'm going to need or what kind of classes are best for me to take now so that I'm better for the future. Um, so I feel like I need more information on what classes are going to help me do what I want to do. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So this is for anyone. So whether you have a plan or not, what are you or your classmates worried or nervous about when it comes to making decisions about what you will do after high school? Nelly, would you like to go? Yeah, so I feel from coming from Lee High School and like the students around me, one thing we're mostly worried about is finance. Trying to cover, a lot of us want to go to school or to the trades even, and trying to cover classes for all of that, making sure that we have enough money, not just to go to school, but to survive, to know when the next meal is, and not have to always you know, be on edge about like, oh, maybe I don't have enough for this or enough for that. So I feel like finances are one of the major things. Absolutely. Someone else? Location, maybe. Okay. Like a lot of people don't want to move out of state because it'll be too expensive, but some people don't want to stay too close to home, or they want to stay close to home so they can visit family and everything. So it's also about where you're at. OK. Thank you. What are some things your school is doing to help you and your peers prepare for the future. So I want to get an answer from everybody this time. So Mike, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so I, like I said earlier, we're offering some of those unique classes. Uh, like I'm in human anatomy and that sports med class. We have some others like the AP Bio, uh, 
there's an AP psychology class you can take, uh, and then through KCTC you can you can do some other things. I have a friend who he's uh, doing culinary school at KCTC, and he's he's really good. <laughs> some good food. <laughs> and I think the cookies were made uh, by the culinary program, today. <laughs> so you'll notice they weren't perfectly stamped. They were made with love, <laughs> right? Thank you, Janelle. So one thing my school does for you know preparedness is we offer KCTCs like Caledonia, and we also have dual enrollment. A lot of the seniors this year, we have this program where it'll enforce us to take English classes at GRCC and psychology, cla psychology classes to get our GEDs. You know, that way those can transfer when we go to college, and that's the way we have a taste of what college will be like and that level of academic. Thank you. Green? Yeah, uh, same thing with the account, right? They have, you know, many AP classes that you would want to take, but they have like 22 information, right? Which is like crazy when you're trying to like fill out your schedule and you know, six hours in a day, you can't fit all of that in. But like you have your AP classes, you have your, um, you know, what you're doing over with the... Dual enrollment. Uh, not just dual enrollment, but also the culinary, yeah, with KCTC. But it's not just culinary, it's also they have welding programs, they have programs for people who want to get like data sciences, and they have a bunch of opportunities for kids if you just want to get even a certificate and not a degree to go out and do that. And with really good teachers that push you to do what you want to do instead of just a traditional four-year career path, while that might work for me, that might not work for my classmates and what they want to do. And I'm really glad and happy that my school district is able to personalize what you want to do for yourself as long as you ask them for it. I think that's really cool. Thank you. Brian? Um, from the non-academic point of view, I think we're like um, learning a lot about responsibility, like turning in work on time and like the consequences you get for not turning it in. So it's kind of like a work environment. You have a lot more responsibility that you have to learn, and I think they're teaching it really well. Okay. So let's let me answer. Let, let me ask this question. You talked about some things that your schools are doing. What are, what are some other ways or things you wish your schools would have done to prepare you for your future? And Riley, I'll start with you. What do you wish your schools would have done? Now, I know a lot of superintendents out here, a lot of principals <laughs> and teachers, but you're okay. You're in a safe space. All right? Okay. So what do you, what do you wish they would have done? Um, I wish, like, made your options more like seeable, I guess, because there are a lot of options that you can have, but you don't always get to see them. Like they aren't mentioned a lot. So if they aren't mentioned, they're not gonna help you. So maybe exposure to uh, professions, experiences, courses, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Green. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's always a way that anyone or anything can improve. And so I think what each count would specifically could do is just get a better focus on exactly what the kid child wants to do, right? Because I know experiences from my friends where they did a lot of things where like they thought they wanted to do something, but they weren't like really sure. So if there was like, I don't know, like a test or maybe like even a program that we know is very accurate to see what uh, students' interests are specifically. And then from those interests, kind of compile what jobs would do those things, right? Because not everyone's going to fully want to do art, or maybe some kids will, but like not everyone's going to maybe want to fully do business, right? So if you're able to find uh, this like middle ground for different careers and different paths in order to do exactly what you love to do, but also still know that you have a wide uh, variety of options, I think that that's really the next step for a, a lot of school districts. Thank you. Really? Anything your school could have done differently? Well, for me, my school is a little bit more specific. It's a very small school, so we don't offer a lot of stuff. One thing I would recommend my school doing would be like offering more resources. We only have one guidance counselor for the whole high school, and I feel especially she focuses more on the seniors and juniors, and a lot of the freshmen and sophomores are kind of just discovering themselves in high school, and they have no guidance. And I would like I would appreciate that guidance to start earlier as well for freshman year, as well as having more diversity with classrooms, like maybe more art classes or more music classes, 
we offer band and choir, but other than that, that's about it. For art, there's just the basics, painting, drawing, and that's it. So I would ask for more diversity in classes so that other students can explore while still in high school instead of exploring in college and wasting money in classes they probably never would take again. Thank you. Like, yeah, and I, I almost kind of going off that point. Um, it almost feels like from a freshman, even as you get right into high school, you're pushed into the college uh, machine, it feels like. So it's you have to know almost right away at some point because you're trying to plan classes around what you want to be when you, you, know, you get to that senior year as you graduate. So you just you get, you get in there, and then it's, you're, almost, you're churning out college graduates. So sometimes how it feels like. Uh, which like me going, I knew I wanted to be in going to college. Like I've always loved education and things like that. But for friends, it's it's trades or college. There's there's nothing else you can do. Uh, so there's not like not like a gap year that that is encouraged by some. Thank you. I'll take a couple this time. So, what are some challenges you or your classmates face in achieving your high school plans and goals? Talk to us about some challenges that you have. I feel like the constant fear that you have to do more. Right? Uh, I, I can speak from my personal experience where I felt like I've padded out a lot of the stuff that I did at my school. But, you know, there's a lot of kids who feel like the pressure that they're put under to do the best academically and also at the same time do the best uh, in your extracurriculars, right? With sports, with leadership programs, with uh, different things that are kind of like flown at you, right? Nowadays we have, my phone's not in my pocket, it's on the table, but you know, nowadays we have phones, right? That allow you to talk and text and see anything, right? So you just have these like bombardments of things that you can do. And I think like really understanding like what you want to do and specializing in that thing is something that, you know, a lot of people struggle with, and, you know, same thing with me too. Someone else? Challenges. I feel like there's a lot of anxiety of younger students when they first reach high school because they feel really unprepared and then you're kind of just thrown into it and expected to like just be an adult at that point and then after your freshman year they kind of stop the babying and it's all just work 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 and you're expected to get everything done and I think that's really hard for students to just go from easy classes to really hard classes and expecting to get good grades. Thank you. What do adults need to know or what advice would you give adults who are guiding you? What advice would you like to give the adults? Um, some advice I'd like to give adults is to remember how you were at our age, how the stress, the questions you had, and you know, I know a lot of us have been asked just today, like, what do you want to do in college? What do you want to do after high school? And we're like, oh, we already have our, especially us up here, preparing for these speeches and everything. We were like, oh, we're going to do this, 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 and go to this school and do this. Like, you know, like I know in the video, one of the students from Lee said to just ask us if we're okay. You know, I would say that's some advice. Think about how you were in our shoes and just have empathy. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I just, just give us some love, guys. <laughs> you don't have to give us any advice. Uh... <laughs> Authentic student voice. <laughs> sometimes we just need a hug, you know. Uh, coming home, sometimes I don't want to ask, How's your, how was your day? Uh, what, was your, what homework do you have? I just want a hug, you know. That's all I need. Those lions win the night. We have a lot of hugs. <laughs> a lot of hugs. All right, so we're going to end on a really positive note, and I would like everybody to end. To wrap it up, please share one thing that excites you about your future. Janelle, I'm going to start with you this time. Is that okay? <laughs> That's fine. All right, let's do it. All right, one thing that excites me the most, but also scares me the most, is not knowing what's next. I kind of like the surprise, but also not knowing what's next. Like, I could end up who knows where, but, like, that excites me. Like, I'm ready for it. I'm just ready for the next challenge to see what's next. 
Thank you. Green? Yeah. Uh, the thing that really excites me is thinking about how much more people that I can help, right? Because I felt like the thing that really helped me get into like politics and government and what I want to do was my father. And I know that he's somebody who's very passionate, right, about the things that he thinks. But outside of all that passion, the one thing that I really got from him was he really cared about helping just people, right, regardless of what politics you believed in. And so for me, knowing that I can help people out and knowing that I'm going to have even a bigger impact in my community, I feel like that's something that's very exciting for me. And something that I hope that I can do in the future. Thank you. Um, getting more freedom. Because <laughs> I don't even have my license yet. I feel like I can't do anything like on my own accord. That I'm always kind of focused on school and everything or I'm focused on sports and I can't wait to do what I want to do every day. Thank you. Take it uh, home. Money. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm excited for relationships. Um, I could have my, my new best friend uh, waiting in my dorm for me when I, when I go to college next year. Um, I could find the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, you know, uh, get to know my dad and my mom better. Like, there's so many doors that are just opened up after you leave high school, and I, I can meet the new, those new people. Tell me this isn't a phenomenal generation of students. Please give them a nice round of applause.